This video is for section 9.3, Solving Quadratic Equations. Our goal is that we can solve quadratic equations by graphing as well as using square roots. So let's review what standard form is of a quadratic equation. It is in this form ax squared plus bx plus c, and the other side is equal to zero. So that's important. We're going to be setting things equal to zero today. The solutions of a quadratic equ equation are the x-intercepts. These are also called roots or zeros. So please take note right now that x-intercepts, roots, and zeros are all known as the solutions of a quadratic equation. Now where are these located on the graph? I will show you. These points right here in the green, those are the x-intercepts, aka roots or zeros. Basically, um, when these values are plugged in or substituted into the quadratic equation, you result in zero. So it should make sense to you that they are on the x-axis where y equals zero on that axis. To solve this specific example, x squared minus 4 equals zero, you can just graph it by using an x-y chart and then applying those points. And the x-intercepts are 2 and negative 2. If we were to plug those values in, 2 squared minus 4 equals 4 minus 4, which equals 0, so that works. And negative 2 squared minus 4 is the same thing, 4 minus 4 equals 0. So that confirms that these two points right there, the x-intercepts, are the solutions of a quadratic equation. So first, let's graph. The axis of symmetry for all three of these functions is x equals 0, and the reason why you can look at all three equations the b value is not there at all. The b value is 0. So when you plug in 0 for the negative b over 2a, you get 0 over 2a. Anything 0 divided by anything is always 0. So the axis of symmetry for all three is going to be on that y-axis, also known as x equals 0. Now, this makes it nicer because the b is 0. That means it's centered on the y-axis, and this is the y-intercept right there, so negative 1. So we can plot that, negative 1. And then to figure out the rest of the points, well, you can make an x-y chart if you'd like. And plot those points. Just from knowing parabolas, I know that the function is just going to go up and over like that, up 1 over 1, and then up 3 over 1 both ways. And you can confirm that when you plug in the values right here, the y values match. So we have 3, 0, negative 1, 0, and 3. So the question was, what are the solutions of each equation? Remember, solutions are x-intercepts. Well, this first graph crosses through negative 1 and positive 1. So there are two solutions. And they are x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. So there you have it for our first example. The next one, this is the parent function that is centered at 0, 0, and then up 1 over 1, and up 3 over 1. So we have our next quadratic, well, how many times does this graph cross the x-axis? The answer is one time, and that solution is x equals 0. That is the only intersection point of this graph on the x-axis. There is one solution, and that is x equals 0. Now the next one starts at positive 1, that's the y-intercept, and then goes up 1 over 1 and up 3, so off the graph. Okay, there you have it, our last parabola. How many times does this graph cross the x-axis? The answer to that question is no, none time, no times at all. Um, there are no solutions to this graph, so that's what we're going to say is there are no real number solutions.
there may be solutions, but we don't have to worry about that. You'll learn more about um, imaginary solutions or complex solutions in Algebra 2. So there are three different possibilities. Two solutions, one solution, or none. Example 2. Solving using square roots. So this time we, won't, we will not be graphing. Instead, we will be solving for the x. And in my opinion, I like this. This is fun because it's solving for the unknown variable, and you're actually used to this. You've done stuff similar to this before, such as two or three step equations. So first thing we're going to do is rewrite the given equation. The whole goal is to isolate the x squared on one side of the equation. That means get the x squared by itself. So first we want to move the 75 over. So now we have 3x squared equals 75. We need to get rid of that 3 in front. The 3 is attached to that x squared by multiplication, so to undo that we're going to divide both sides by 3. Cancels out, x squared equals 25. Oh, that's a nice number. And the last step is, in order to get the x by itself, we have to take the square root of both sides. Square root, square root. When you do that, you need to account for the positive and negative answer. Because remember, when you square a positive or you square a negative, you're still going to get a positive answer. So now that equals positive or negative 5. So the solutions of this quadratic equation are x equals 5 and x equals negative 5. And remember, to check your answer, like always, you could just plug those numbers in for the original equation, and it should work. Okay, here is a real-life application problem about an aquarium. An aquarium is designing a new exhibit to showcase tropical fish. The exhibit will include a tank that is a rectangular prism with a length L that is twice the width W. The volume of the tank is 420 cubic feet. What is the width of the tank to the nearest tenth of a foot? First, we need to realize that we're talking about volume. Volume of a rectangular prism is V equals L times W times H. Length times width times height. And I'm guessing that you know that by heart already. We are told a couple things in this situation. We are told that the volume is 420. So immediately what I want to do, I guess I'll write the givens over on the side and then immediately just plug them in like that. We are also told that the length L is twice the width W. So the way that I'm going to write that is L equals 2W. Length is twice the width. That's the formula form of that word sentence there. And then one other thing that we're told, oh, in the picture, we're told that the height right here is 3. So now, let's plug all that in. L is going to go, and it's going to be replaced by the 2W. L is going to go right where the, sorry, I'm saying it backwards. The 2W is going to go where the L is. The W is going to come down, and the H is going to be replaced by 3. Take a moment to let that sink in. The good news is, with all this substituting, we only have one variable now. That was the whole point. Before we had three variables and it was getting overwhelming. Now we just have one variable. Okay, what I did in that step, I just put the 3 in front and then I combined the w's. Hopefully you're, you're alright with that. 420 equals 6w squared. Now this is looking really familiar and similar to the previous problem. We want to get the w by itself, so divide both sides by 6, and that means we get 70 equals w squared. We must take the square root of both sides. <clears throat> so that means, I'm just going to move over here, plus or minus square root of 70 equals w. Remember, when you take the square root, you always want to put the plus or minus symbol in front. And the last thing is, type that in and see, w is approximately positive or negative 8.4. So now let's think about that for a second. Positive or negative 8.4 for the width. Does it make sense to have a positive width or a negative width? It only makes sense to have a positive width. So that means the tank, the tank of this aquarium for the tropical fish will have a width of about 8.4 feet. So now let's write that down.
that completes this lesson. For the lesson check for 9.3, you can choose to graph or um, find the square roots. I think most people's preference will be finding the square roots, but there are some visual people out there. So thank you so much for following and listening. If you are doing so, I appreciate that. You can try the 9.2 lesson check. That is what will be due tomorrow. Um, and also feel free to try the next lesson check as well. See you soon.